It was the result of the evolution of the Republican idea of governance in Michigan, right? Which in some ways is microcosmic in terms of what counts for a theory of governance in the Republican Party today. Oh, you have some democratically elected officials you've chosen to make decisions for you? That's nice. Actually, we'll take over from here. Doesn't matter what you voted for, or who you voted for, we will take that power. And you know, Rick Snyder is gone from the governor's mansion in Michigan. Michigan voters pretty resoundingly rejected his uh, Republican attorney general who ran to succeed him. They elected Democrat Gretchen Whitmer as their governor. But that problem, that toxic core tenet of the Republican idea of governance that we saw play out to disastrous and fatal effect in Michigan under Rick Snyder, that democracy and democratic elections are no longer how we make decisions, that those are inefficient, unwise, that once you have the power to do it, you just take the power anywhere you want. Democratically elected officials are an obstacle to be overcome. That spirit is alive and well in Michigan and now well beyond Michigan, as we can all see. I mean, for the last year, as coronavirus has ravaged Michigan, and in particular, the majority black city of Detroit, and as Governor Whitmer has tried to use her powers as governor to prevent the spread of coronavirus and try to keep the people of Michigan safe, Republicans in the legislature have done everything they can up to and including suing Governor Whitmer to throttle her efforts, to make it so that there can be no state action against COVID. Armed protesters swarmed the Michigan state capitol multiple times this past spring. At one point, lawmakers found themselves attempting to do their legislative business with multiple men with rifles looming over them from the balcony inside the capitol. Ultimately, the armed mob forced the Michigan capitol to shut down. When lawmakers returned to work, some of them brought their own security guards. After the November election, the Trump campaign filed multiple lawsuits in Michigan trying to get Joe Biden's victory there overturned. Specifically, they wanted all those votes from majority black Detroit thrown out. They were all presumptively fraudulent, the Trump team claimed. And the local board of canvassers in Wayne County, where Detroit is, they went along with it, at least for a while. The Republicans on that board for a time blocked the certification of that county's votes, apparently hoping they could throw the whole state to Donald Trump by disqualifying all those mostly black Biden voters that they just presumed were frauds. I mean, Trump tried this everywhere, but Michigan was the place it actually worked for a second, right? Where the local officials actually started to go along. Right? At least until there was overwhelming public backlash, got those Republican board members to think better of it and recant and certify their votes. I mean, and at that point, Michigan had only barely absorbed news about this in the run up to the election. The thwarted plot by right wing extremists to kidnap and possibly execute Governor Whitmer hatched by a rogues gallery of right-wing extremists who had surveilled her house and practiced making explosives in their backyards and studied the routes by which police might respond to an emergency at her house so they could head the police off and make sure they could get away with the governor before police could respond. Some of those people in, implicated in that plot had been at the armed protests at the state capitol. But according to Michigan's attorney general, their ambitions to topple the government went, went beyond just Michigan. I think it's important to remember that in terms of the siege that we saw at the Capitol uh, in Lansing last April, that firstly, many of those ultimately were involved in the plot to kidnap and kill the governor. Uh, and that an alternative plot they had was actually to take over the state capitol and to either bomb it or to execute people by firing squad. Um, but then many of the people who were not arrested as part of the plot to kill the governor actually traveled to Washington, D.C. And so they were part uh, of the events that took place at the capitol. I think that Michigan was definitely ground zero. Uh, I think it was a dry run, and people saw how very easy it was to essentially take over a state capitol building. Uh, and the lesson that they drew away from that was, why not try it at the nation's capitol? We can do it uh, in Lansing, Michigan. Maybe we can do the same thing in Washington, D.C. And they were right. Michigan as ground zero, Michigan as a, as a dry run. Michigan has been a laboratory for this kind of anti-small-D democratic right-wing politics for years now. And I'm not saying that Michigan started all of it, but Michigan has been a microcosmic experience of it. 
in Michigan, part of what we have seen is that there's right wing extremists, just like there are in lots of states. And something happens when right wing extremists aren't bound anymore to a right wing governing party, to a party that takes responsibility for governing and getting stuff done according to the will of the people. When you give up on governance, when you give up on democratic accountability and responsibility for your actions, and you're the political wing of the right, what do you expect to happen to the unhinged part of the right? The mooring that political activists, politically active people have in responsibility is a mooring in small d democratic governance, is a mooring in governance, is a mooring in getting things done, in being basically competent and being accountable to, gov accountable to the voters when you're not. When you lose that mooring, the crazies among you can float off into territory that is hard to come back from. And so we are seeing a specific form of accountability today in Michigan, seeing those mugshots, seeing Governor Rick Snyder, the first ever governor of that state, brought up on criminal charges for his actions in office. But it took years. And meanwhile, Michigan's been through the wars, almost literally.